I've always respected the movies, these suave characters that told the stories that I grew up to. Because who I am is like a combination of the people that I've looked up to in real life and on TV, and it's who I am today. I'm, I'm good at being Tom Kraszkowski. I want to be somebody else for a while. So here I am out the pipeline. Last week of work. I was hoping you guys to see there's a reason I'm leaving this this uh, little area here. This pipeline deal, this whole oil field business, is, uh, I just had enough. I can't wait to get to Vancouver and start acting, start doing what I wanted to do. You, know? you work all the time, then you get home and you feel like you have to treat yourself. Drink 12 beer and buy a brand new vehicle every year just to make yourself happy. That's just, it, it, it's, a, it's a fine life for some people, but it's just no life for me. He had been in, in a, some plays in, in high school and he had said then that he wanted to act, but I think it was just something that was um, he was a little bit afraid of. I, I think he's gonna give it to, you know, he's gonna give it his best shot and he's gonna he's gonna find a way to uh, to succeed uh, somehow, some way, by being uh, you know by being somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> Are you gonna tap? <laughs> People who really know me know that I'm very sensitive. The, the front that I put out is, it, it is who I am, but it's, there's a lot more underneath it. It's a mask, it's a big, big mask. I'm not a very good describer guy. <laughs> I think a Tommy is very uh, bullheaded and uh, <laughs> won't take no for an answer. Acting, that's, you know, that's, I think it's, one of those tricky things to get into. I have to get out of here. The only thing I can accomplish here is more drinking, more drugs. Vancouver's gonna be tough, it's not gonna be easy. Maybe I'll get there, maybe they'll tell me that, maybe they're gonna say that I don't have what it takes and I can't learn what it takes. But I don't think that's gonna happen. I believe in myself. This is Tom. Um, he is from Saskatchewan, a very, very cold place. His fear is um, not um, succeeding in life. And I said that we probably all are like that. You're all gonna feel safe enough that you can come in here, like I said yesterday, and fall flat on your face, not literally. You can come in here and mess up. I want you to. As most actors come to this because they want to be heard. They feel a need to be heard somehow, just to be able to stand in front of people and, and not collapse. And as you go through it, you have different degrees of learning. You learn about yourself, you learn about worlds that you didn't know about, and then you get to live all these lives. It's, it's amazing and wonderful. Or you get to be an alien, and you find out what that life's like, or what we imagine that life is like. Our imaginations get to soar, it's fantastic. I think, I think there's a lot of confusion as to what acting is. They have this erroneous sort of idea that once class ends, then you cease to be an actor. This is not true. And you need to be constantly observing with all of your might what that human experience is. Um, oftentimes starting with yourself. Sure. So, today what we're going to do is something called follow the feeling. And for some of you, that may be a painful process. <laughs> I feel scared! I'm scared! I'm so nervous! Ah! Can't think of anything. Good, then just ah. go, good. go with the feeling. Because feelings don't often have thoughts. They just have, they just have energy. I feel... Ah. Good, good. But look at someone.
this, this craft uh, can be healing for you if you allow it to be. And it goes through the, through the emotions. That's, that's how it works, because like, we're all emotional beings. And, and emotion is energy. First, it starts with emotional connection with themselves, because oftentimes people that are not actors have no sense of their own personal emotionality and in the craft they have to work through that so that they can open up and reveal what they who they are inside publicly and this is the only industry the only craft where that's not only expected but it's worth money but people pay people that are willing to do that ah just ah keep going Stop go it. with it go ah go with it ah doesn't matter. What matters is that underneath that is a bunch of sadness. So there's two things that goes on with you. Number one, you won't allow it to be as big as it is because you're afraid you're gonna hurt somebody. Number two, once it once you start to release some of that stuff, all the stuff that, that fuels that anger is gonna start to come up and a, and a lot of it is sadness. There's a big sadness in you. you you're afraid that that that's all there might be is the weaknesses and that the great moments might never be there. I get up every morning and I'm terrified and somehow I still make it through the day and not only do I make it through the day, I do it great. So I want you to observe all of these changes that are going on in your body. And now stop wherever you are and find a partner and stand opposite that person. Invite them in to see you. Some of us are so afraid to let people in. It's like we're afraid that they will notice that we have, you know, a hair out of place or something like that. It doesn't matter. And nobody else notices but you, trust me. Because in everyday life, we're not allowed to do this. Our whole society is saying, don't, you've got to behave, you've got to be a certain way. You can't do these things. But this is an opportunity for you to actually express all the rage and all the sadness and the sorrow and all the things in your life that are inside of you. It's a huge responsibility in a sense to be a real artist, to find the truth in things. It seems like we always turn to the artists to express the depth of emotion that people feel. They don't turn to politicians. They don't turn to accountants. He abused me for a number of years, and uh, I came very close to killing myself. To, to go from one place to another, being able to just turn your wrist and be where you want to be, just going somewhere, and that the, the journey is, is part of the experience. Because when I'm in a car, I just can't wait to get to where I'm going to be. But when I'm on a motorcycle, the journey and the, and the travel is, is the fun part. I don't think he's lived in this city enough. He, I think he was really content with his life in Saskatchewan. It's like he's really proud of it, but he won't really let go and move on. Just sometimes when you talk to him, you're just like, things he says, you're like, really? No, that's like not the best life out there. Like, it's just kind of ridiculous. Like, I wonder what the world looks like from his eyes. You okay? The most interesting thing about mushrooms is I think you can see the um, life force of the Earth. We are unique. Life is a miracle. Every particle inside my body was formed inside of one of those pieces of light. It's intelligence. Technically, I'm using it in the wrong sense. I'm using my intelligence to go back to her back to nature. I don't want to write anything mean. I don't want anything stupid. Why not? Can I put a pot leaf? Yeah, put a pot leaf. Yeah. I was driving home after, uh, after school and I was driving down Main Street and, and this big black, big SUV decided that they were going to have enough time to, to go do a left turn and they didn't so I, I flew over the handlebars I went to stand up and this, this homeless guy came and he's, he helped me up and he says, do you need an ab? It's like, oh no, I'm okay. I looked down at my jeans and my favorite jeans were ripping. And then when I went to put weight on my right leg, uh, just things didn't feel right. There was like 
mashing around of like bones and tendons that just didn't feel right. Oh wow. Shoot. Then what did they do to it? Did they put like stitches or like? She didn't get out of her vehicle. And there was no criminal charges laid, so. What time of the night was it? It was about eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. Maybe she was drinking. I was drinking a little bit. When Tom came in and he and the first thing I could say is Tom, I smell booze. You know, I don't know if it's an age thing or if it's just Tom being Tom, um, but there are some things that are going to hold him back until he lets him go. Okay, I want you to slow down, please. Good, slow it down. Tom, I need you to. Um... Slow down. Walk fast, talk fast, live fast. Everything was fast. Yeah. Everything he did was fast, even like when he was a newborn. He'd, uh, I breastfed him and he'd, he'd, you know, start eating and he would just like eat like crazy and eat 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 and then I'd lift him up and, and it would be like, he had gorged himself so much that he would just throw up half of this all over everything. Ruined every good golf shirt I ever owned. <laughs> I feel scared about slowing down. If, because by slowing down, you're actually starting to feel your feelings, which is, this is what it looks like. There's a reason why you had a car accident that only incapacitated you to this degree, because it's a wake-up call for you. A four-letter word, it terrifies the hell out of me. And that's why your body said, no more running. Literally, no more running. Yeah. Wanting to be an actor and wanting to be helped to be a better actor are two different things. If they don't want to be helped, then you can't help them. It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter what you throw at them. It doesn't matter what you say to them. It doesn't make a difference. It's the parable of the teacup. It's like the, the master was pouring the disciple the, the, the tea until it overflowed. And then the disciple said, well, you know, master, it's like no more tea can fit in the cup. The master said, and you have to empty your cup. If you want more, you have to empty your cup. Some people won't empty their cup. I have a date tonight. So it's my first Valentine in my whole life. I'm 23 years old, I never had a Valentine. So I'm kinda, it's as much for her as it's for me. I'm kind of excited about this. I got a nice romantic dinner planned and then we're gonna go to uh, my friend Rachel's after and have some drinks. Something's going on right now. It's really, there, I have this very strange feeling that obviously through my accident and you know, things like this on my arm, Something's going on, whether it's my body or the powers that be, whoever it is, is trying to tell me something. And I just am not able to tune in. I can't really quite hear it, I guess, exactly what's trying to be said. So I'm actually, I'm going to a psychic today. Something, something has to be changed and I have to figure out what that change is. But first of all, I want you to make a wish. Make a wish? Oh, no. I, if you like. Okay. I wish to be a working actor. You'll be, number six. Number six means uh, you are into a turn of a beginning of a new life. Learn how to be yourself. The nice thing is uh, you're alive. The nice thing you can walk. You have a brother? No. Ask your mom if she missed one uh, child before. She did. A boy. It was a boy? <laughs> yeah, it was a miscarriage, yeah. It's a boy. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, that boy will come back uh, when you, when you start having a son of your own. That boy will come back. And then she said by 2012, um, you'll be getting rec recognition. Yeah, I can just, I told you that. I can see that. By 2014, she said you'll make a name for yourself. She told me about my wife, where I'm going to meet her. And I'm going to have four kids, two boys and two girls. When? Um, when I'm 32. I get married when I'm 32, 30, something like that mm -hmm. later. And my wife is, she's in law school. She's a law student mm -hmm. down, down in the United States. Mm -hmm. Date lots of women, she said. I feel like this isn't going to work for me. What's not going to work for you? Well, because, you know, what you just explained to me. This is a psychic talk. I know, know, but I'm just saying I feel bad. I feel Why do you feel bad? Upset. I just, I'm all confused now. I don't know. Honestly, I don't think that she said, she didn't say anything about us. Let's just forget about it. I think we should just forget about Let's it. Let's just relax and go on. With exactly. It. I want a woman in my life that is is going to be strong and independent and be able to raise children. I connect with, with, with guys, you know, as friends, and that I don't need women to be my friends. I need women to mate with.
liked him. I really did. S still kind of have feelings for him. But I kind of slowly realized what kind of a person he really is. He's like, Tiffany, I like you, but not in that way. I just want to, I just, I just want to do this to you, this stuff to you, but I don't want a relationship. I'm like, I don't want that though. And before he left, he told Gabriel's friend that I'm not even good in bed anyways. It's as simple as that. I think you're a really, really, really amazing girl. Like, really. You're really sweet, thank you. That means a lot to me. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. You don't understand me. I understand you a bit. Danielle. We want to care about you guys. Yeah. How do you suppose we care about you? Because there's two brothers that should love each other and, and they're, they're fighting. And you really have to look at your life and where you're at right now. Are you lonely? Yeah, I think, I think so. Is there somebody's love that you want in your life that you're not getting? Yeah, yeah, it's my dad. There's just a lot of, lot of pressure. He, he's, he's supportive, but it's... I don't know. I don't know what it is. It's I, I, I have feel the need that I really I really have to do this to prove to him that I can But there's a couple of places in the scene where you actually go to that place and you reveal your heart. What but you think that you can take me? Don't tell her! No crazy, I can terrorize people! <coughs> I could kill you in your sleep tonight, you know that? I could snap your neck like that! I wasn't make you, but I'm an animal! That's right! I'm an animal! And this is the jungle! Go on! For Tom, I think he's not admitting that he's in a lot of pain. He seems really hurt to me. I don't know if he is, but he seems really wounded and kind of like, whatever, yeah, it's okay, yeah. So it's kind of a defense mechanism and it's not okay that he's in that much pain. And he has to delve into that to see what's really there. That's where the gold is, and you can use that kind of pain for your work. It'd be really great if he got some therapy. It's hard for anybody to reach out in that way because he doesn't think there's anything wrong with him. And it's, you know, it's a, sometimes a very shameful thing to ask for help and to go into therapy, but it will help him become a better person. When I was really young, everything got to me. Like the things, like I asked my dad if if we we could use the power tools to to build something, and he said no, I can't right now. I'm busy, and I lost it. I ran away from home. So what I did is I, I joined the military, a place where emotions aren't allowed, a, a place to make myself strong. And then I went right to the rigs, another place where emotions aren't allowed. But now I want to become an actor. Now I got to build tools to feel emotion. So I definitely think the acting is it's good for him emotionally because he's. He's a very emotional <laughs> he person. He inherits our, our mom's um, emotions and her temper. And he, he has such a huge temper. I don't think people realize it, it sometimes how huge his temper is and how much it takes for him to keep it under control. And you want to be open. You want to remain as open as possible, not think about your lines, and really let your unconscious, your subconscious mind take over. Arnold Ick! Wait again. Arnold Ick! Oh boy. Can I manage your coat? I don't have one! Oh boy. I was sitting there watching Harper in that scene, and it seemed like everything he was doing to her, he was doing to hurt her more and more and more. And I mean, when we're in school, I understand that that's part of our process, that's part of the point, but what he was doing was just sadistic. Are you happy with us? Open it. Line. Anybody have a book? Thanks. Is there a problem with me? He's not saying line to you, he's just calling for line because he's upset. So I know, I know, I, I, I lost my line. Giving me lip like that, where I come from, you get teeth knocked in for talking like that to someone else with such disrespect. Like, I, I, didn't, I didn't invoke that. I didn't do anything. Like, there was no need for him to do that to me. But I didn't have the script in my hand. I yeah, forgot, no, you're right. mistake. And you're for right. him, nice. Yeah. That's a per that's a personal shot at Tom Kraszkowski. And now like, I don't wanna go back in there cause I'm just so embarrassed because he just told everyone like, whatever, I don't know. Right, I'm on. furious right now. I know. But I'm mad because I want my family to be happy. This is what acting is all about. If you and Harper 
don't get along for the rest of this semester, there's nothing you can do about it. No, that you're absolutely wrong. You're 100% wrong. Me and Harper, oh. we could be great friends. Stop. And we, we, I think we will be. Stop, stop, stop. But we're not there yet. But we're not there yet. Tom. We're at the part where it sucks. All right, let's have a, like five minutes, go pee, come back. There's no way I'll be, I'll be able to do it. As, as much like all this acting in progress, like learning about myself slowing down, I don't want to become to a place where I am numb. Are you numb right now? I'm the complete opposite. Then how can not do anything and make you numb? Because you're not doing anything and you're not numb. Can you repeat that one more time? I didn't. You say that I don't want, if I do nothing, I'll go numb. You're doing nothing and you're not numb. It's, it's the opposite of what you think it is. It's just that you can't control it. That is your issue. That's what I'm telling you. That's where you're afraid to go to. I think Henry was just frustrated with me. I took his advice and I blew up and I went into this blackout rage place that I've never been before in my life. It's a place that I tried keeping out of as a child and because I listened to him and he doesn't know anything about my history, he put me in that place. No. that there's a, a little tension in the class here. We're all scared that we're not good enough. That is a universal given fact for every actor on the planet. I don't care who you are. The other thing Staline and I have decided to let everybody know is that your diligence all term determines what we feel you are capable of doing in the showcase. So the first thing I want you to do is um, sense walking towards that home and try to recall the scent of that place. It might even be 15 years ago. See if you can sense something the way it was. And I want you to see yourself as a child in your bed. After I disciplined Tom, uh, after a while, I'd, I'd feel guilty about it, and then I'd kind of sort of apologize for, for disciplining, but um, yeah, it, it, was, it was, I guess you could phrase it, tough love, you know, um, something that we knew we had to do, but we didn't necessarily like doing, but had to be done. I want you to see your family the way it used to be. I found out, um, I learned a lot about my dad. <clears throat> yeah. I always felt neglected, like I wasn't sharing time with him as much, so it was, he was, when he would come, it was the discipline. Mm -hmm. And I spent a lot of time crying about it then, but now, it's, it's not, now I'm just, I just get angry mm -hmm. instead. They did the best they could, I guess. I don't like Dave. For you to say that, it's just like saying, yeah, but I kind of deserved it. And you didn't deserve it. They did what they had to do. Like they, they had their tough time. They're raising great. Like, look at me now. Like, I'm doing, you know. But I'm this angry person. I use my anger to overcome my sadness. It can uh, wreck your life forever. Because you don't, have, you, you don't have a grounding. That's why I've had to cope this way. Because if I go to the sad place, then I have to get myself out. And it's so deep that the way to get myself out is just not to go there. So I gotta work with myself and try to get myself, uh, find a way to go in and come back out without destroying myself. Without drugs, without alcohol, because that's gonna numb you, right? You gotta let yourself kind of mourn the loss of your childhood. Parents put their kids in front of TVs and just, you know, as a way to escape their obligation as parents, which is one of the main reasons why I got into acting was because when dad was outside, to the animals, I was inside watching movies. And they were my other parents. They were my third, the TV was my third parent. So I want to become that third parent. So Tom, you're gonna say, I'm sad, and you're gonna say, 
You're sad. I'm sad. You're sad. I'm sad. You're sad. I'm lonely. You're lonely. I'm lonely. You're lonely. I'm lonely. You're lonely. I'm lonely. You're lonely. I'm lonely. I punched a bus stop last night. Okay. <laughs> so, just want to see that if it's broken or not. The doctor pushed down on my hand and uh, felt the click. We went out to the strip club and I had a good time. I just got really, really lonely. And um, I'm going home alone and I just got really upset for the moment and that's when I punched it. So I was a funny little note, I was talking to Bobby and it's like, yeah, so uh, I punched myself because I was, or punched something because I was lonely and now I can't even masturbate. That's irony. Because that, but I, I, think, I think I have to quit drinking, like all together. Because like, like I, 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 I drink, I crash, I crash my motorbike. Uh, and then I, I drink and I break my hand. Like this is already getting to the point where this is this is this is becoming a problem. Okay. All right, mom. All right, mom. Bye, bye. I love you. Thank you so much. Bye. She's just the most amazing woman um, in the world. She just said, just uh, you know what to do. She said you're smart. Like, you know. Don't beat yourself up. She said you're not gonna. It's not gonna get you anywhere. And I haven't been. I just I got to uh, make some positive changes. Like this is. Ooh, that hurt. Got to. Uh, I know what I need to do. So I'm standing outside the office of John. He's a psychiatrist. Um, Selena's class last Sunday, a lot of stuff came out. And, you know, just, just some issues with, with, with my dad. I think they're unresolved. I just think that, uh, you can listen to some, have somebody to talk to, somebody that doesn't know me, that can, you know, give me an outside perspective on what's going on. And I guess we'll know more in half an hour when I come out. One, two, a one, two, three, four. Stop in the name of Henry Ma before you break yourself. Slow it down. You might end up dead. <laughs> yeah. Each time you come to class, you have this little frown. I'm so scared of you. <laughs> but sometimes we're good friends. Then I don't show and that ends. Tom. Oh, Tom. Don't know what we're gonna do to the COVID. Um, so I went down to, to John, the psychiatrist, yesterday. It was our third session. It's kind of weird. It all kind of comes back to why I wanted to be an actor and all this stuff is because I've been acting my whole life. Or I needed to do that when I was in Norway, you know, around all the farmers and, and, and people that I, didn't, I didn't, didn't quite fit in there. I needed to do it when I joined the military. I'm just going to try, you know, be awkward, be, be real. My real, not not this this character. He's pretty awesome. Like, you know, he's he's good, but he's not making me happy. Not not for long. I don't care whether you sing well. I don't or or badly by your standards. That ain't the point anyway. <clears throat> We've all seen the man at the liquor store begging for your change. Hair on his face is dirty, dreadlocked, and full of mange. But God forbid you ever had to walk a mile in his shoes. Cause then I really might know what it's like, what it's like. Tom's on, Tom's on a good track. He's, he's doing well. He's on a really good track because he's, uh, he's allowing himself to grow rather than uh, fighting to stay stuck. Cause then I really might know what it's like, what it's like. Okay, so, all right, talk to me. Uh, I love that song. What do you connect to in this song specifically? specifically. I just wanted to, uh, to purvey that message that, that it's, uh, the world's harsh, and if, if, if you look things with, to, with judgment, um, you'd be missing the whole story, and, and that, there's, that there's, there's good in, in a lot of the bad. 
Yeah, but there's but there's so much good stuff happening for you. You're very you're becoming more emotionally connected, which is really really good. Just because this program is almost over, you've done everything that's been asked of you. You're reaping the benefits of it. I think that's fantastic. Uh, and you you also know the difference between when you're going too fast and when you need to slow down. You're just not practiced at the slowing down part yet. Mm -hmm. Do you ever allow yourself to just like lose it, it like publicly <laughs> in this class at all? You've seen it there, yeah. That went one time, yeah. Like I thought of suicide for the first time. That's how like dark of a place I've gotten. It wasn't there since I was like, you know, fourteen. So I'd like to, you know, with professional help which I'm which I'm getting is go to those places safely. Good. And because then it becomes available to you as an actor. You're you're able to connect to it safely so that it, so that you can feel those feelings and have them displayed without damaging yourself. Right. That's really the, the for me. That's really the bottom line. Good work, Tom. Thank you very much. It's really exciting to see other people get things, and I know how I felt when things started to click in for me, and so it's really exciting to see it click in for other people. You know, when people realize it's more than just stand here, say your lines. Tom has such desire and such drive and dedication. He chose to come here and he's, he's on a mission. The challenges I feel Tom has is that he, he is so driven and so pushed that he sometimes he can't just sit in himself and be in the moment. All of a sudden, your character starts to speak. And it's not just you. You've given your character enough to start to live, to actually live. He smokes weed, but that I think he just uses as an antidepressant. With this character, do you think that you're capable of going down the rabbit hole and envisioning him, maybe even being him for a short period of time? I think you're capable of writing that down. Yeah. Okay. I'm just getting into character right now. Physical actions help. Okay, from now on, it's gonna be all. All Dustin. If actors are conduits of the human experience, which I believe they are, um, you know, then you're living a number of different lives within one life. And so I do think it is a, a blessed discipline, or it can be at its heights. You know, it can also be um, prostituted. Who's in charge here? That's what I want to know. That's what I want to know. No, I really want to know that. I Honestly, actors, uh, acting is a competitive sport. So if you feel like you're getting your ass kicked, you're getting your ass kicked. So start from truth from the very beginning and just keep on the truth train. Okay, instead of this thing, this lie train, it's horrible to watch. Yo, it's showcase oh, night and I'm feeling all right. The lady's looking tight. Tom to my right. I got a few things to say because I'm ESAVs and I break it down like fractions. Me and Tom Krzykowski on our way to the stars. After tonight, we're going to be hitting the bars. Peace. These people are starting to agonize me. Like, I love them all, but like, it's just time to carry on and actually, uh, you know, try to make some money doing this. Like, get go to auditions, um, carry on with your life. You know, like, six months is a long time. And I'm at this point now, today, where I'm standing here, just like, I know I'm going to do great. Not because I'm going to push through it and because everyone's going to love me, but just because I, I feel like I'm going to just do my best. That's got a lot to do with quitting the dope, too. The dope is not. It's not helping. Anyone that says it's not addictive is lying to themselves. Success is measured by how many people you bless. So if we bless everyone in the audience tonight, we'll be known as the most successful people they know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bless you. Aw, oh, that was sweet. That's that true. was the best thing I've ever heard come out of your mouth. Black eggs. Or rocks. Gelatinous material falling from the sky. Angel hair. And star jelly. <laughs> and scientists always laugh at these, but people have picked this stuff up, I'm not kidding! I started in the military and I was terrible at just the structure and how things worked, talking to people. But like after, after three months, man, I was a good worker. You know, so it just takes that time 
that transition period, you know, and it's for the acting, it's been, I think it's going to take a lot longer. But I, I knew that coming in for, for me anyways, personally, that it's going to be hard for, for three months. And then after you start feeling about how the, how, you know, the, the, the actual craft works, how the, the structure of a scene works, how to work with people. And then you start to be okay. You're about the one thing that makes sense to me in this world too, and feels good. And then you go and you, you, you do this and, and you say that? No, it doesn't feel good. I'm your best friend. You know what, growing up, I was the most closed off kid you could possibly meet. People would talk to me and, and like, I would not talk back. Someone would be like, hey Ryan, how's it going? I wouldn't even answer them. What do you mean by leprechauns? You know what I mean? Those women that don't like men, they like to be with other women. <laughs> <laughs> Lesbians, Velma. It's cool. I'm just so stoked that I'm going to be an out of work artist for the next decade or so. You know what I mean? I borrowed the bracelet and I meant to put it back as soon as I had worn it to the movies. I didn't mean to keep Nobody it. will believe that, least of all the police. If I compare this to um, evening classes, part-time classes, the amount of natural talent that has chosen this path is amazing. But what I also see is this is the class where people do the least amount of work. We'll both be angry. We will both be angry. <laughs> God damn. Truck driver leather mentality. You could do it your entire life and never make it anywhere. And it's really a choice you have to make whether or not you love it that much. Acting is tough. The acting life is tough. All, unfortunately, most people only get to see the glamorous side, which is uh, maybe 1% or less. And that's nice to, get to draw you into the craft, but then once you're in the trenches, the only other thing that's going to keep you going is, is this truly how you, the actor, want to express your creative joy? There's going to be lots of joyful moments. You know, you'll be having a great performance and you'll be on top of the world and there's going to be lots of times when it'll be like, like you're Moses wandering through the desert and you're wondering when the thing is going to end. You can see what I do. I go in the back, things are low, I fill them up. I come out here, things are at the back, I put them to the front. It's going to be kind of weird though because I'll be getting a paycheck for a week's work and it's going to be about what I make in a day on the pipeline. Well, it's gonna be exactly what I make in a day on the pipeline. About three hundred fifty dollars a week when I make that in a day in the pipeline. So it's a little bit of a pay cut. Thomas Kraskowski, ringing for the role of Huck. Ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. Uh, Bud answers the and hands the phone to Huck. Hello. Huck's world collapses and space shows. Oh, this, this must be some mistake. Well, we have to appeal. Hell no, I didn't. I would never touch the stuff. No. Um, just a quick, do you mind if I give you just a quick adjustment? Sure. And then you can, you can take that for what it's worth. So Bud is like, you know, the, the dad that you've never been able to live, live up to, his standards. You're trying to live up to his standard and you're trying to get, gain his respect. Yeah. All right, do you, are you ready? Do you want to try it again? Uh, just give me a minute. Well, the thing about the actor's process that a lot of people don't really understand is that it's an exploration of self and it's an exploration of the human condition. And actors as communicators and storytellers, what we do is we demonstrate to humanity how it is to feel again. And as actors, by us being willing to go through our own process in order to feel more, we're inspiring others and demonstrating to others what's possible. Oh, man. Oh. <laughs>
Just joking around here. Um, actually out here on a film set uh, doing a car accident shoot across the way here. And i um, pretty excited about it because I've got this awesome makeup artist doing this cool makeup and uh, do my first film, which I'm pumped about. It's a student film called Common Sense and I'm playing martial arts expert, Randy Johnson. <laughs> he's, a, he's a funny guy. Um, so yeah, it's fun, fun, man, doing this movie, it's fun. You know, like you're on film sets and there's all these people that are being really super creative around you and you're just the actor. You just like come up for or like, okay, we're gonna uh, rehearse. You do your scene and then you sit around for another hour until they set the lights up for the next shot. And then it's, it's kind of fun, I don't know. Flirt with all the makeup artists and the other chicks on the set. Hope start making some money. You gotta drink some wine first. Oh, that's nice wine. Too bad we have to drink like Indians. Two towels. Well, my name is Daria. And I have met Tom Krzyzewski at a film set. We, we blurred the lines between work and reality of falling in love. And uh, we kind of did. When you meet that special person, you're like, I just want you to be happy and I want you to make the best decisions for your life. And I wish I could be that person to share that with you. She's uh, obviously in an emotional place right now with her, her boyfriend and shit. So we just gotta, gotta take her easy right now. He is very determined, very determined. Whatever he wants, he will get, no matter what. So, nine months later, I'm back where I started. I think I was in this position, wasn't I, sipping on a beer? I've stepped it up and drinking French wine now. Um, out of a bottle, still haven't gained much class. So, uh, uh, drug-free, which is great, great for me, but, you know, five o'clock comes around, I got a beer to uh, kind of take away the edge of everything. And, Start here, but my last name Vancouver, and like this is the best place I could could ask to be in Vancouver. So I borrowed money from a, from a good friend of mine. Uh, as soon as I did that, I was just like, all right, this is getting serious enough for I gotta get back to work. So uh, heading back to Alberta to go back to the pipeline. 